There we go. Right, welcome back. We are, it's a glorious day to be back at work as well. So it's a nice cool October day. First proper frost I've seen anyway, after being away in Shropshire for a couple of weeks. And we're here at Heffel, got the very loud, very loud longhorns. We are PDing the cows, giving their BVD vaccine and bleeding them for Yonis, trying to get as much done. I've got Emily here, you'll see Emily. Um, she's one of our vets, she's a new grad last year. Um, I thought, what a shame to have her in the office on a day like this. Uh, and you can see the, the highlands up there over by Mary. It's more of those highlands, so they've not been bald this year. They might be bald next year, so they're getting a BVD vaccine. We'll sort of get set up. There's a few other th things happening today, so we'll see how we go. As many of you can already tell, this isn't a farming enterprise like many others. Production of beef definitely isn't the primary aim here. For more on what the Heppel team are doing, take a look at a couple of previous vlogs, or even better, visit their own website and get the story straight from the Exmoor pony's mouth. Now, as mentioned, today we're checking who's in calf or not, giving the breeding herd a vaccine for BVD, as well as taking blood samples for a chronic wasting disease of cattle called Yoni's disease. Richard from Newcastle Uni is also here changing some GPS collars. Again, check the previous vlog to see how those work and why they're going on. We've got plenty of hands to help today, so it should go reasonably smoothly. These are the bulling heifers, so they haven't been through many times before, have they? No. No, so it's all, it's all new for them, it's all pretty aversive. So, yeah. sorry, I'll let Richard, Richard, you're putting the collar on. Okay. We've met Richard before, so I won't torment him. <laughs> but he's putting these GPS collars on to sort of track what these animals do. Um, movement wise, grazing wise. Um, and we saw him doing this uh, one or two times before, I think. Those are anyway, aren't they, Michael? I give it the cattle, the uh, longhorns are very docile in general. Yeah. These are still your favourites? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you like these then? <laughs> I think you're frozen to the highlands. I wish, I wish we were all Highlands. <laughs> <laughs> I got that on tape. Oh, put the, edit that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Robson for uh, president of the Highland Cattle Society, I think. <laughs> so, a ringing endorsement there for the Highlands. More on the differences between them and the Longhorns later. As we've just said before, these are the bulling heifers coming through, i.e. yearlings that will meet the bull for the first time next summer to hopefully carve down in the spring of 2025. If that seems far away, that's because it is. Cattle keeping is a long-term game with very incremental progress. And unfortunately, one heifer destined for breeding here suddenly doesn't seem so suitable. Hey darling, oh, that's, uh, that's quite interesting, isn't it? So that's yeah, it's just a growth, isn't it? It's not it's not a wart. That's actually... And she's got another one there, look. Yeah. I think I think that's better just a couple of sort of warty things on there. I think she's probably better off not being a bully heifer, Michael. Yeah, let that one go. Yeah, I wouldn't treat her or anything, you know. Right, we'll let that one go. Yeah. Yeah. Too easy. Yeah. You get the blood first. Bleeder and ja you bleed and jabber. Yeah. Look how she's pretty fat, isn't she, Michael? Yeah. <laughs> they don't. They don't. They don't suffer, do they? Oh. That's why it's a fat one. Fat. That's why I give a second chance. I'll let you jabber first as well. I remember you saying there's like two types of these, wasn't there? When they yeah. arrived, there was like the darker coloured ones, and then there was the lighter ones. There's a lighter one. Different yeah. type, weren't they? Yeah, they have a different oh, sort of types and different frames. Oh. Did you get that on camera? <laughs> I think you did. You got to try to jab it with the cap on. <laughs> got. <laughs> So she's in calf, but she's pretty. She's going to be pretty late. So she's probably, probably like 60 days. When did the ball come out? It's about 49 days, isn't it? I think. You jab that one. 
Don't worry about bleeding them in there if you can't. Oh, they need to be a bit tighter, don't they? But what we'll do, if you jab them in there then, you can bleed. When you're looking to see if they're in calf, what's yeah. your, like, how, how can you tell when, so, so, when they're, they're going to drop the young? Yeah, so, so you're looking for a, a, like a, just pregnancy yes, no, is you're looking for, a, you either see a little empty uterus, which looks like on your screen, which you can't see, I'll take it. Yeah. But like a little uh, cross section. Well, how do you describe an empty uterus? Like a star shaped yeah, thing within a. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, when they're pregnant, they basically those fill with fluid, and on an ultrasound, fluid is black. Um, and then you see a little cut, like eventually, depending on the size of the calf, you see um, like the calf itself, and that gets bony as it goes, time goes on. Yeah. But then also. Uh, like cotyledons, I don't know if you ever, you said you're from farming background, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So you know, little, in a, car, a cow or sheep's placenta, yeah, those little buttons? Sure, yeah. And you'll see those on the screen, develop, depending on the stage of pregnancy. So that one just had tiny little buttons. Max, you're here helping us today. What are you, um, you work with Richard, don't you? Yeah. You put the collars on. So you're doing your dissertation into, what was it you were saying? So, so studying Newcastle University with yep. Richard Jones by last year. And yes. I'm doing a dissertation project on behavioural differences between Highland and Longhorn cattle on, okay. on the Hepler estate. So that'll entail their radio tracking movements with the collars. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's all updated on the system every hour. Yeah, yeah. So we're working with that data, and then we'll come and also do some land sampling of the different areas on the estates as well. And see how that affects see it. See how that goes, and obviously, you know, working today. Perfect. Yeah, and we've got you, people. We put you to work, yeah. labelling these tubes. Yeah, yeah. Ideal opportunity to come and see how it works. Good man, right. Yeah. You'll be on YouTube now. Sorry about the, uh, sorry about the blood samples in advance. <laughs> That's all right. Every should, time. Should we take, should we take the horns off? Yeah, so she was, she was very keen on. I know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, don't worry. It's, it's still filming. Still filming. Oh, yeah. It just goes up. Well done, eh, mate? So I'm going in and I'm just having a feel first for the placement of the uterus and any cotyledons or anything. And then I'm going to put my scanner over it because I know exactly where it is. And I know you guys can't see this, but I promise you I can see a little calf. It's actually got a big calf. It's probably about 120 days or so. So she's in calf. And Emily's just going to give her a BVD vaccine. And then we're going to keep her in the crush until her mate's behind her because they've been a little bit reluctant to go in. Have you got a number and everything? Yeah. Right, I'll, I'll, uh, you can pop that wherever you want, Max. Righto, so that's Highlands all done. Sorry, that's Longhorns all done, scanned. We've got a couple more jobs to do with them. Just these Highlands to go, they've got, there's no fence collars coming off. They'll be bled for Yonis and they'll be jabbed. So, let's get them done. Now the Longhorns are done, just the Highlands to go. No need to PD these as they haven't been with the bulls, but they might be bulled next year, so they are getting the BVD vaccine and still need sampled for Yoni's disease. One of the quirks of these cows is that they are remarkably nimble. Despite those horns, although the brutes make it seem like they're half stuck, when they spot a gap or want to move, they get there faster than a racing whippet. Michael, we were saying earlier, are these your favourites compared to the Longhorns? Oh, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of heppel sarcasm there. Yeah, no, they're fine, they're great for what they're here for. Right, Emily, how was that for you? <laughs> <laughs> right, that's us. We're just getting packed up. Um, that was, it was okay, wasn't it? They're, they're not cattle that come through the race very often. So they're somewhat reticent about it and that with those horns. They can be a little bit stubborn and awkward, but we got there. We got there. I think it's time for lunch. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that and I managed to stitch something half interesting out of that. But um, yeah, see you for the next one. <laughs>